10 Myths About Keeping and Breeding Caradina Shrimp That Will Surprise You Hey there! I'm excited to share with you some fascinating insights on Caradina Shrimp. In this video, I'll be debunking 10 common myths about these delightful little creatures. So get ready to learn and be entertained as we explore the world of Caradina Shrimp together. Welcome everyone, this is Ray from RW Aquarium Pages. I'm here to share my journey in planted aquariums, shrimp tanks, and everything in between. Caradina shrimp are fascinating creatures that have gained popularity in the aquarium hobby. However, there are many myths surrounding the care and breeding that can be lead to confusion for new and experienced hobbyists alike. In this video, we'll explore 10 common myths about keeping and breeding Caradina shrimp. Myth number one, Caradina shrimp are easy to keep. This is true with caution. While Caradina shrimp are generally hardy, they do have specific water parameters that need to be maintained for optimal health. They require stable and clean water with a pH of between 5.5 and 6.8, and a temperature between 68 degrees Fahrenheit to 74 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20 degrees Celsius to 23 degrees Celsius. Any higher than 74 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius can potentially cause the Caradina shrimp to have a bacterial infection. They also come from cooler streams in the wild. Additionally, they need a source of calcium, such as micronutrient powder, to support their exoskeletons. I don't recommend crushed coral or cut bone as they keep leaching into the water, causing the water not to be stable. Stability is required. I don't recommend just tap water, as tap water parameters can change from location to location. Starting with the correct water parameters within range for Caradina shrimp is a must. Myth number two, all Caradina shrimp can be kept together. This is true with warning. There are many different species of Caradina shrimp. They can be kept together, the bee and crystal, but they will crossbreed Crossbreeding Caradina shrimp is different than Neo Caradina shrimp, the cherry shrimp. In Caradina shrimp, when they crossbreed, they produce stunning patterns which can be line bred further for your personal patterns. Did you know that pinto shrimps are a cross of tiger shrimp with a time and bee, then further refined? In Neo Caradina, when you crossbreed with different colors, after a few generations, they will revert back to the wild form without aggressive selectively breeding. Crossbreeding can be a fun adventure. Myth number three, Caradina shrimp can be kept with other aquarium inhabitants. This is true with warning. While Caradina shrimp can coexist with some other fish and other invertebrates, it's important to choose tank mates carefully. Fish that are aggressive or have a tendency to nip at shrimp should be avoided. Most people love to see an ecosystem of planted shrimp tank with fish. Breeding tanks can be ugly and usually aren't used for a showpiece in your living space. Myth number four. Caradina shrimp do not need a varied diet. This is false. While Caradina shrimp are primarily algae eaters and eat biofilm, they also require a varied diet that includes protein, calcium, and vegetables. It's important to provide a balanced diet to ensure their health and longevity. There are a few products that promote biofilm, for example, Glass Garden's Bacter AE, Aqualex's Enzyme Powder, Benabachi B Max, and Dead Shrimp Powder. There are also many, many commercial shrimp foods available for different brands. I recommend getting a few to rotate around for your shrimp. If you're using a non-shrimp specific food, please ensure there isn't a high level of copper in the food. Although copper is needed in the shrimp's blood system, in higher concentration, it can be lethal. Myth number five, Caradina shrimp are self-sustaining. This is true. While some species of Caradina shrimp can breed quickly, for example, crystal and tigers, it is important to provide a suitable environment and adequate food to support a healthy population. Overcrowding and insufficient food can lead to stress disease, and mortality. The Caradina shrimp colony will grow to the size of a tank, then it will stop, and sometimes it will start to die off. 
or the colony can crash. So you'll need to remove some shrimp when it gets too much. But in a 10 gallon or 40 liter aquarium, that could house 150 plus caradina shrimp easily. Myth number seven, caradina shrimp can survive in a bare bottom tank. While this is true, while some species can survive in a bare bottom tank, caradina shrimp prefers a thin layer of substrate to wander around in. If the substrate layer is too thick, they can be trapped in leftover food and they can be anaerobic bacteria pockets that won't be good for your shrimp. Some breeders actually leave their tanks bare bottom. Myth number eight, caradina shrimp are easy to breed. This is true if you follow my suggested three pillars. One, make sure you get quality shrimp. Two, the water parameters within range. And three, patience. Then you'll be successful. When I purchase new shrimp, typically juvenile size, they'll be buried, which is breeding, within two to six weeks. If you've only received one sex, then you're out of luck. If you've received adult shrimp, they don't adapt well as juvenile shrimp, and they could be past their breeding age. Myth number nine, caradina shrimp do not require a filter. This is semi-true. While caradina shrimp can survive in a tank without a filter, it's important to provide filtration to maintain the water quality and to ensure a healthy environment. A sponge filter is ideal for caradina shrimp as it provides gentle water movement and does not create a strong current. I personally use two sponge filters and a hang-on filter in my shrimp aquariums. Myth number 10. Caradina shrimp are not affected by medications. This is false. Caradina shrimp are sensitive to many medications and treatment that are used to treat fish and other invertebrates. It is important to research any medications or treatments before using them in a tank with caradina shrimp to ensure they're safe and will not harm the shrimp. For example, if some medications have a high level of copper, that's toxic to caradina shrimp. These are my 10 myths debunked. And now, here's a bonus myth number 11. Caradina shrimp are low maintenance. This is true. Caradina shrimp require regular maintenance to keep their environment clean and healthy. A weekly water change of 5 to 10% is recommended, or you can use the TDS method. Monitor the TDS. If it rises by more than 15 parts per million, it's time to do a water change. It's important not to overfeed your caradina shrimp, as that can foul your water with uneaten food. I've had many cases and similar results with my friends. When they go on vacation, their shrimp actually do better. In fact, I have temporary four caradina shrimp aquariums under my utility sink until my new rack gets built, and those four tanks are doing the best. In conclusion, while caradina shrimp are fascinating creatures, they do require specific conditions and care to thrive. By dispelling these common myths and understanding their unique needs, shrimp keepers can provide the best possible environment for the shrimp to live healthy and fulfilling lives. I'm curious to know, did you know about these 11 myths or facts? And did you have other myths or facts that you'd like to contribute? I absolutely love sharing my experiences, success and fears with everyone. It's just so exciting to document my journey and plant the shrimp tanks and share it with others. Stay tuned for more informative videos as I've got plenty of content in store for you. Thanks for watching and listening to my rambles. I really appreciate it. Have an awesome day. Thanks for watching.